Leicester has so much to see and do. There are all the well-known things, such as Richard III being found in a car park, but also the lesser known ones from its recent past, including the Leicestershire TARDIS or police box. There's also the UK Space Centre, two universities, many museums, some incredible Victorian architecture, and so much more, including a large section of Roman wall. In this video, I will cover the above and more, including location, useful information, and some historical context where relevant. So please stay to the end for all the detail. I hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience. I recently visited Leicester to see how it had changed since 1989. By the way, look carefully at these two pictures and see what's missing. As well as doing videos on the change, link at the end, I was reminded of and came across so many things of interest here. If you're a visitor or student in Leicester, this is an overview of just some of what is available. More will follow in another video. So let's start with Richard III. For this, we are in this highlighted part of the city and this is where the clock tower is for reference. Recently, Richard III, the last English king to be featured in battle, seems to have dominated the city. The whereabouts of his body was unknown until quite recently, when it was found in what had become a car park. The body has now been reburied in the cathedral. A Richard III visitor centre has been built on the site, which as well as telling the story of Richard III himself, also tells the quite incredible story of how the body was found. There is an admission fee for this museum and it's well worth it, but the cathedral next door is free. The cathedral dates from the 12th century, but unusually has only actually been designated as a cathedral since the relatively recent time of 1927. In 2024, it has just been refurbished and is very inviting to visitors. And there is plenty of information, both about its history and its archeology, span and obviously its connection to Richard III. The cathedral itself is next to the Guild Hall, which is an incredibly old building dating from 1390. This is also now a museum and it's free to enter. And again, well worth a visit. On the ground floor, there are actually two old prison cells and this, um, painfully looking piece of ironwork used which used to be used for displaying the bodies of people who've been executed as a warning to others just along from the guild hall is wigston house the oldest house still standing in leicester dating from an incredible 1490. it's now a bar and restaurant and well worth a visit not only for the old building but also for its amazing light fittings and furniture a short walk from the city going north is Abbey Park. Seen here with the nearby National Space Centre and also the Abbey pumping station. Abbey Park, as its name suggests, is on the site of an old monastery or Abbey that was shut down by Henry VIII as part of the dissolution. The monastery was once absolutely huge. It was the largest Augustan monastery in the country. The building's layout is marked out on the ground. There are also some remains still standing and there are again good explanation boards. The park is next to the city's waterways and if you carry on walking out of the city you come to two very impressive and very different buildings. The Space Centre and the Abbey Pumping Station. The Space Centre is a fascinating place to visit. And one of the highlights is the rocket tower, which can be seen very clearly from the river. There's also a great planetarium. There is a charge for the space center, but next door is the free Abbey Pumping Station Museum. The museum has lots of displays by the front entrance, including the recreation of some old rooms. But the highlight for me was walking to the back of the building to see these amazing wheels and machinery very well preserved and was so worth seeing. The building was constructed in the late 1880s and added to in the 1920s. It wasn't finally decommissioned until 1964 and it has been a museum since 1973. 
Walking around the outside of the building, we can see it was designed to look like a, a grand home or a mansion. But also at the front is this, a police box, but very different to the TARDIS that we're used to seeing on Doctor Who. Up until this point, I thought the blue police box had been the standard across the whole of the country. Moving to the area around the castle, this includes the magazine, castle gatehouses, the hall, the castle mound, De Montfort University and the church of St Mary de Castro, which lost its spire. This is De Montfort University, but its entrance is almost this medieval building, which used to be one of the city gates. It's called the magazine, as during the English Civil War, it was used to store munitions. Behind the gate, we can see the free Newark Houses Museum, which is housed in two very old buildings. The displays cover Leicester's industrial past, including its key role in the hosiery industry. It also recreates some Victorian shops, which are really quite fascinating to see. Upstairs, there is the military museum of the Leicestershire Regiment and includes recreations of trenches and also a reference to Leicester's very impressive Arch Remembrance War Memorial designed by the famous architect Sir Edwin Lansdeer. I will cover this in the next video. Next to the Newark Museums is this cobbled street leading to a medieval tower that was again an old entranceway to the castle. Going through the gate and looking back, the gate we've just come through is on the right and on the left we can see a later castle gateway. Also in the middle is the Church of St Mary de Castro, which until recently had a spire which had to be taken down due to safety concerns. In the castle grounds there is a large surviving hall from the castle, which is the oldest surviving Isled and Bay divided hall in Europe. It actually dates from the 11th or 12th century and it's still in use. Up until the 1970s it was used as law courts. It is now used by the De Montfort University Business School and is normally open on the open day weekends that happen once or twice a year. Leicester had a Mott and Bailey castle shortly after the Norman Conquest and if we look up from the castle gardens we can see the mound next to the existing hall. Unusually, the mound was reduced in height by about five metres in 1800 for the bizarre reason of creating a bowling green. It is now possible to walk to the top of the mound from Castle Gardens below and also from the De Montfort University side. On the walk up to the top of the mound, there's also another curiosity which you can see from the outside, John of Gaunt's cellar. And now I'm just moving a little bit further north to a really old building, or part of it. This is the Jury Wall, located here. It is Roman and one of the largest surviving Roman structures in the United Kingdom. There's normally a museum on the site, but it was being renovated at the time when I visited. Turning round next to the river, there is this mysterious brick circle which took a bit of research, but I found out it was a section of rescue building from the main entrance to Leicester Wholesale Market, which used to be on Halford Street, and was actually demolished in 1972. And to finish this video bang up to date, Leicester has some great food and drink outlets. These pictures are of Watson's Bar on Granby Street, which has an amazing interior and cocktails. I hope you've enjoyed this video. More will be coming shortly. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Click the alerts bell for future releases. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience.